turned out. People have gone home. Uh, fewer shops are open than there were in the past during the daytime, and virtually none are open now. And people are just sitting at home waiting to see what happens. And there really is a considerable worry, of course, among ordinary people uh, in case a missile or a bomb does strike in the heart of the city. But that aircraft was shot down over Bosnia, which is an interesting point we'll pick up in a second, and that the two pilots were now in NATO detention, according to a NATO spokesman in Brussels, two Yugoslav Air Force MiG-29s shot down over Bosnia during an apparent attempt to fire on NATO ground forces there. So, Francis, if, um, if that uh, NATO uh, report uh, firms up, yeah. then... It does look like the first sign of serious retaliation. And also the first uh, sign of serious spreading of the war zone, rather than it being in Yugoslavia itself, the various provinces, Montenegro, Kosovo, Serbia, uh, doing, undertaking this in Bosnia, that is a, a pretty serious action. And uh, I think the other point is with, if it does turn out they've lost two MiG-29s, and on the first night of the war they lost three, possibly on the second night lost another, um, at the best estimate of the MiG-29 strength, and the MiG-29 is the best aircraft they've got, upper estimates are about 27. Mm -hmm. Well, they've lost sort of six or seven now, which is a pretty bad loss. So, yeah, 20% almost of... Uh, and yeah. it, if they keep on using them in this way, mm -hmm. they're going to be losing one or two a night, and they will lose their best aircraft in probably about another five days. And, uh, I mean, diminish their, their defence capability quite considerably, presumably? In terms of air-to-air, -air, because the other aircraft they've got, especially the MiG-21, this is an aircraft whose design heritage goes back to the mid-late 1950s, to say that if they send those up against NATO aircraft, it's going to be like uh, shooting fish in a barrel, mm. um, actually overestimates the capabilities of the MiG-21. It might be useful to remind us, as it appears that this is, uh, according to NATO, an attack on NATO ground force, might be useful for you to just remind us what NATO ground strength there is in the region, because there's quite considerable numbers. I don't know whether we've got a map that you can point it out on. We can have a look well, in a minute. Well, if we think of Bosnia and the ongoing stabilisation force there, which is basically NATO run and operated, minimum of about 24,000 troops, uh, from memory about 16 nations. Britain has a brigade there, the Americans have a brigade, the French have a brigade. It's a sizeable force. Mm. And if the Yugoslavs wanted to perhaps use the Bosnian Serbs as a proxy or introduce their own ground forces in theatre, they would be making a serious mistake. They would not end up the winners there. They could create some problems, but they would not, as it were, win. Uh, it looks like a high-risk strategy. Let us now wait and see what happens over Macedonia. We know there are 12,000 NATO troops there already. Will they now start trying to target them? And in or need to stop the Serb offensive in Kosovo. Many Kosovar Albanians, of course, believe NATO's right. Uh, the Serbian military machine cannot go on for long like this. Uh, they hope that uh, very soon NATO will be able to take on uh, Serbian tanks. And you hardly see a Serbian soldier away from a Serbian tank. Uh, they don't engage their foot soldiers because they lack motivation. They don't want to die for Kosovo. Tonight, claim and counterclaim continues. Serbia says its jets have attacked Kosovan separatist bases. NATO says it has shot down two Serb planes. Whatever the truth is, it is clear that on its third day, this war has escalated into the air and into daylight hours. Alex Tom ...deny flight, which patrols the airspace of Bosnia-Herzegovina, the no-fly zo zone there, and they've been patrolling there since 1995. The planes that shot down the two Yugoslav fighters were not... Uh, in any way uh, connected to the airstrike operation that is currently going on with um, over Yugoslavia. Now, uh, we're told that uh, the latest thing is that we're told that the encounter occurred today at approximately 5.15 local time, that's Central European, uh, and it occurred over the skies of Bosnia-Herzegovina in the vicinity of a town called Tiochak, which is on the Yugoslav border. Now, here with me at the moment is uh, Dr. Jamie Shea, the NATO spokesman, who can perhaps uh, bring us up to date a little bit more on what has been going on. Now, uh, Dr. Shea, can you tell us a little bit about Operation Deny Flight and what they've been doing since 1995? Well, since 1995, Patricia, as you said very well yourself, well, we've been maintaining a no-fly zone over Bosnia as part of the Dayton Peace Agreement. That is ongoing. And, of course, at the moment, those planes are in a very high state of vigilance to ensure that uh, Yugoslavia does not try to attack NATO forces uh, 
as you say, in the S4, the NATO Stabilization Force in, in Bosnia. And uh, that may have been uh, the intention of these uh, MiGs uh, this afternoon, flying into the Bosnian airspace. And that's why, of course, they were engaged immediately by NATO and two of the aircraft have been shot down. Now, I've heard reports out of SHAPE headquarters, the military headquarters of NATO, um, that the pilots were seen parachuting, but you're telling us now they were captured. Yes, the latest information I have is that uh, once they landed on the ground, they were detained immediately by S-4 soldiers, and they are, of course, in detention at the present time. Now, what is going to happen to those, those pilots in detention? Can you explain what the procedure is? They will be kept in detention until such time as uh, this uh, current Kosovo crisis has been resolved, and then, of course, they will be handed back to their national authorities. Now an important uh, uh, issue, the clusters of targets that have been hit and also where they've checked. And so, yes, they're around the three capitals, Belgrade, Pristina, Podgorice. You've got the keys there. It's interesting, there's only one target they've said they have destroyed, which suggests mm. it will never operate again, which is a surface-to-air missile site outside Belgrade. But um, that is the only SAM site they reckon they've done any major absolute damage to. A couple of other ones, uh, and surface-to-air missile support sites, again, around Belgrade, they say they've inflicted severe damage. But we perhaps should be quite careful about that. Bombing reports on Iraq in the past have talked about destroyed severe damage. Often they've turned out to be not quite right. Um, though overall, looking at the list and looking at the, the target clusters, and again around Pristina, there's perhaps an interesting point. Most of the targets around there have been ammunition depots. They've been command centers for the Pristina, the Kosovo uh, army base. They have been uh, support facilities, fuel dumps, and so forth. Targets which obviously NATO says Attacking these, destroying these, will limit the capability of the Yugoslav army at present operating in Kosovo. And we just saw the report of the refugees coming out. Mm -hmm. So, From CNN in Washington, seen live around the world, this is World View. I'm Judy Woodruff. Bernard Shaw is off. On day three of Operation Allied Force, Yugoslavia shows no signs of backing down. And NATO launches its first daylight attack. Here you see the launch of a Navy Tomahawk cruise missile streaking toward a target in Yugoslavia. It was fired from the USS Philippine Sea in the Adriatic Friday afternoon, a day when the Pentagon says NATO has begun to target Serbian and Yugoslav forces in Kosovo. In Washington, meanwhile, neighboring Macedonia, CNN's Chris Burns reports. Ethnic Albanian refugees from Kosovo trickle over the border into Macedonia, bringing with them a few belongings and stories of violence and terror. The accounts lend credence to reports that the Serb-led Yugoslav army has cracked down even harder on ethnic Albanians as it battles the Kosovo Liberation Army. That despite NATO's devastating airstrikes. Things happened tonight. There was a lot of shooting, setting houses and stores ablaze. Since international observers, most aid groups, and international journalists have left, the Yugoslav army and uncontrolled Serb elements have reportedly stepped up their attacks on civilians. A field officer of the UN High Commission for Refugees says Yugoslav soldiers executed 20 men in the town of Gyakovo on Thursday. And there are reports of other atrocities, uh, unconfirmed up to now, but here they are, a couple more. Humanitarian Law Center says a human rights attorney and his two uh, sons were found murdered outside Pristina, and the agency of the Kosovo Liberation, the press agency of the Kosovo Liberation Army says that there were mass executions, including 20 slain in Orahovac and 10 in Poduevo. But what's difficult is that without international observers or journalists in Kosovo, it's very difficult to verify. Judy? Chris, could these atrocities... ...sky behind us, some very bright lights approaching now, and this certainly looks like one of these uh, huge B-52 bombers returning to base now, uh, what we when don't it know... gets nearer we'll be able to hear it and then we know for sure that it's a b-52 now you you were explaining to us a little earlier andrew that uh, some of these planes uh, took off first thing this morning and others took off around about lunchtime so of course uh, we don't know which of these this is no we don't um my own guess is the ones that took off first thing this morning at 9 15 this morning were actually going back to the united states if they'd been on a bombing mission, they would have been gone for, for some 12 hours now, which seems far too long. But these ones here are returning uh, exactly 10 hours after a group of three planes took off at 1.15 at lunchtime. 
So that would be the, the same 10 hour flying mission that was flown on the first day. And those planes that took off at lunchtime definitely were armed. When they've come back previously in the last couple of days, have they all come in together or have they been spread out? Uh, they come in within a, uh, about 10 minutes of each other. I will uh, just uh, stop talking now and let you hear the sound of this massive plane. Well, that was number one, Andrew. So uh, any more lights in the sky that you can see that would indicate that uh, another one is on its way? Uh, not at the moment. Uh, those, uh, those lights of that particular plane were, seemed to be hanging in the sky uh, beyond the horizon here for about uh, 10 minutes before it came in. And uh, just at the moment, uh, no more lights behind me. Wait a minute, just in the distance, maybe about another, maybe another plane coming in about uh, 10 minutes or so. Running reports from Belgrade say that there were seven huge explosions in the city. Two MiG-29 warplanes were shot down by NATO fighters. Serb television is claiming four NATO jets were brought down and at least two pilots captured. The bombing resumed as the United Nations High Commission for Refugees reported that Serb forces were killing ethnic Albanians in Kosovo. Here, Tony Blair went on British television to justify the use of force against Yugoslavia. Wave after wave of jets climbed into the night sky from their base in Italy as NATO prepared another onslaught against Serb targets. The reason for the action was all too clear on the ground. In Kosovo, rumours of reprisals and further ethnic cleansing spurred thousands of people to leave their homes in search of a safe haven. A trail of refugees heading into the wilderness, justification enough for the British Prime Minister to explain why the action had to continue. To those who say the aim of military strikes is not clear, I say it is crystal clear. It is to curb Milosevic's ability to wage war on an innocent civilian population. To those who say NATO is striking at a sovereign nation without justification, I say it was Milosevic who scrapped Kosovo's autonomy 90% of its people are not Serbs. Now they have no rights, no justice, no protection. NATO claims more Serb warplanes have been shot down this evening, apparently as they tried to attack peacekeeping forces in Bosnia. Video footage from the cockpit of NATO jets back up the politicians' claims that the air attacks are having a great deal of success. We inflicted... ...make fighters across the border in Bosnia. Mostly Muslim Albanians are fleeing Kosovo with reports of massacres by mostly Christian Orthodox Serb forces. President Clinton warned the Serbs, those who commit atrocities will be brought to justice. Television's most widely experienced Defense Department correspondent David Martin begins our coverage from the Pentagon. The crumpled wreckage of a MiG is all that remains of what may have been a dramatic attempt by Serb President Milosevic to widen the war by attacking NATO troops in Bosnia. F-15s on patrol over Bosnia tracked the two MiG-29s as they took off from Serbia and headed west. The evidence is unclear, but the MiGs might have been the lead aircraft in an attempted strike against NATO troops in Bosnia. If so, it was thwarted when the F-15 shot them down. A second possibility is that they were involved in some sort of a Serb scheme to uh, shoot down one of our planes. The shoot down occurred as NATO was about to begin another night of attacks. B-52 bombers took off from England to deliver a salvo of cruise missiles. Other planes flew out of Italy loaded with laser-guided bombs. Air Commodore David Wilby showed off some video of a bomb hitting an ammo dump. You can tell by the veracity of the fire that's coming out that there has definitely been uh, a fair amount of uh, explosive in there. But the Serb army in Kosovo is still on a rampage. Some executions have been reported in a number of towns. Uh, some uh, destruction of villages has been reported in several towns. And certainly there is reason to fear for the worst. And, uh, and we do fear for the worst. NATO planes have not yet trained all their firepower on the troops who are doing the killing because they are still concentrating on knocking out Serb air defenses.
bad weather is rolling in, and that will, will make it harder to go after the Serb defenses. <clears throat> Excuse me, will make it harder to go after the Serb army. Um, military officers say that unless Milosevic surrenders, the bombing could continue for at least another week. Dan? David Martin at the Pentagon. This, the third night of air attacks, is now in full swing with more huge explosions reported from strikes by NATO cruise missiles and bombs. Especially hard hit, expected to be the outskirts of Belgrade. CBS News correspondent Mark Phillips, who was expelled from Yugoslavia after the war began, reports tonight from across the border in Croatia. The full might of the NATO attack still comes after dark. The southern industrial city of Nish endured a sustained attack setting off fires that burned into the night. The longer the air raids go on, the more damage they do. But with images provided almost exclusively by Yugoslav television now, the world is getting a selective view. This was said to be damage in Pristina, the Kosovo capital. Much of the NATO attack has been concentrated here in an attempt to stymie the Serb offensive against the Albanian population. While military and industrial installations have been targeted, these Serb TV images show destroyed residences where the Serbs say refugees have been housed. Again, there are no reliable figures on civilian casualties, although the Serbs continue to broadcast images of the wounded just as they do of the continued defiance of the Yugoslav military. These soldiers said to be maintaining their vigil on the border with Macedonia. The Serbs are not providing images of their continuing campaign against Albanian civilians. The UN in Geneva today spoke of reports of teachers being lined up and shot in front of their students. With the expulsion of Western journalists, it's impossible to confirm those reports. But with NATO attacks so far concentrating on air defenses and military installations, the Serbs on the ground have been given a free hand to continue their campaign of ethnic cleansing without outside observers or interference. Mark Phillips, CBS News, Zagreb. Government-controlled Serbian television tonight reported at least seven mighty explosions on the outskirts of the capital city, Belgrade. From on the ground in Belgrade a short time ago, we got an eyewitness telephone report for you from Leanne Martindale of CBS Radio and Television. I can hear the air sirens. They just went off about three minutes ago. About five minutes ago, I heard the first explosion. I'm below buildings, so it's difficult for me to get a sense of how far away they are. I would say at least five miles away. I heard about three explosions, and now it's gone completely silent. Leanne Martindale of CBS News reporting from Belgrade. For the first time in the war today, NATO launched an airstrike during daylight hours. The cruise missile erupted from a U.S. Navy warship in the Adriatic Sea. CBS's Richard Roth is aboard the USS Philippine Sea on the firing line in the Adriatic. It was an unexpected order to launch quickly, and for the first time since the strikes began, it happened in daylight. Rising on a blaze of rocket fuel, the cruise missile turned east over the Adriatic toward land less than 50 miles away. Even officers in the ship's ultra-secret command center wouldn't have known the target. The digital directions were locked in the missile's computer. The job of the USS Philippine Sea is simply to be ready and react. The fact is, the change in this ship's operation from uneventful cruise to naval combat has not changed most onboard routine. But it has given every sailor here something to think about. With last night's volley from the USS Gonzales sailing nearby, a total of 35 of the one and a half ton missiles have been launched from U.S. warships since Wednesday night. For many in the crew, it's a first time experience in high tech warfare at sea. But not for engineman Eric Taylor. We train to do things that when a situation arises, we have to rise to the occasion. The Navy says their duty is to protect lives at risk in Yugoslavia with force when necessary. And no one here has been told how long that mission will last. Richard Roth, CBS News, aboard the USS Philippine Sea. On the political and diplomatic front, Secretary of State Madeleine Albright said flatly again today, NATO is united. But there are rumblings of some nervous discontent from NATO's southern flank, especially from Greece and Italy, the NATO countries closest to the fighting. In Athens tonight, 10,000 protesters marched on the U.S. Embassy, fighting with police and burning flags as they chanted anti-American slogans. That followed a statement from a Greek government spokesman saying, quote, 
it's time to stop the bombing and seek a political solution. Tonight, Greek officials backed away from that somewhat, saying they are not breaking with their NATO allies. In Italy, the main staging point for U.S. airstrikes, the Prime Minister backed away from his statement of yesterday, calling for an immediate bombing halt. And in Rome, protesters disrupted Parliament. In Russia, protesters were out again today, and the Kremlin cranked up its pressure to stop the Allied attack, expelling two NATO representatives from Moscow. The Russians are traditionally allied with their fellow Orthodox Christians in Serbia. Here in the United States, hundreds of Serbian Americans turned out to protest in Chicago. The demonstration was loud but peaceful. President Clinton put out a videotaped message to the Serb people today. He tells them President Milosevic has endangered their future by forcing them into a senseless conflict. But the main message from President Clinton and his aides is aimed at holding together the alliance. Scott Pelley is at the White House. Scott? Dan, keeping the alliance in line, of course, is the president's first priority. And tomorrow, he is expected to make a number of calls to other NATO heads of state to encourage them to stick with the plan. Now, the Allies shared a good bit of intelligence today about the latest atrocities in Kosovo, and the Italians and the Greeks sent word privately to the White House that they are still on board. The president also warned today that Milosevic and his generals could be tried later as war criminals. Dan? Scott Pelley at the White House. U.S. officials are keeping an especially nervous eye on Macedonia, the tiny Balkan country that borders the Serb province of Kosovo. During the past 24 hours, anti-American demonstrators have attacked the U.S. Embassy in Macedonia. CBS News correspondent Alan Pizzi is there. U.S. Ambassador Christopher Hill, who spent months on an exhausting round of diplomacy to try to end the war in Kosovo, today surveyed the evidence that the conflict may be spreading. The American Embassy was attacked by what were described as members of the Serb minority here. Macedonian security forces were on hand to ensure they got nowhere near the premises today. American soldiers serving with the UN Protection Force here were rushed in to beef up security inside the compound. The U.S. diplomatic mission here is classed as a small embassy post, which means it doesn't have a permanent Marine Guard contingent. But the way things are going in this part of the world, that may have to be reconsidered. The violence reflects anger at NATO bombing and fears about the growing number of ethnic Albanian refugees from Kosovo. An estimated 20,000 are already here, and Macedonia says it cannot cope with more. But news from Kosovo reaching the head of the expelled international monitoring mission indicates more will be on their way. Stories of the police uh, coming in masked, uh, smashing doors, searching apartments are stories we're getting from some of our people that we left behind, locals. In the meantime, the flag has been run up again. Alan Pizzi, CBS News, Skopje. NATO forces... The pictures of the Serb forces burning the villages and killing innocent civilians, then disappearing into the countryside, giving the impression that they're a ragtag guerrilla force. That perception is dead wrong. In Kosovo is a very ruthless and well-equipped force of 30,000 troops, 340 tanks, 250 armored personnel carriers, and approximately 280 artillery tubes, roughly the equivalent of two US, U.S. Army divisions, both in number of troops and firepower, all inside of an area about the size of the state of Maryland. General, given the size and scope of those ground forces the Serbs have in Kosovo, what will it take for an air campaign to defeat them? Three or four days, very in, uh, three or four weeks of very intense bombing. Three or four weeks. Uh, weeks. And I'm talking about two to three hundred sorties a day in mountainous terrain, under and around clouds, dodging heat-seeking missiles low to the ground with AAA as a threat. Make no mistake about it, Dan. We would lose airplanes and we would lose pilots. But we would break the back of the Serbian fighting force if only we have the political will and the national patience to see it through. General Vasilkloshin, thanks. Our front and center. More tonight from Jeff Locke. As the stealth bombers return from what the Air Force calls successful missions, those who have supported the much maligned multi-billion dollar B-2 said essentially, we told you so. Both Congressman Dix and I agreed 
it was worth it. Congressman Ike Skelton, whose Missouri district houses the B-2's only base, and Washington Democrat Norm Dix have been fighting the critics since 1980. What was once supposed to cost $270 million a plane ended up more like $2 billion. And the B-2 has had trouble flying in bad weather and with maintenance. We have seen the kind of criticism on every single major weapon system, and then when we go to war, they work. The Air Force is eager to capitalize on the success of this mission, letting reporters not only behind the controls of the simulator, but up close to the airplane as well. Still, despite its success, the question remains, is the tremendous cost worth it? Uh, the plane is currently worth about five times its weight in gold. Not worth it, says the publisher of the Bulletin of the Atomic Scientists, despite all it does. It is stealthy. It's not invisible to radar, uh, but it is very, very difficult to detect. But